Thanks for tuning in this afternoon. The time is 20 past four. We've got a guest joining us for part two, Dr. Shweta. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca, for having me again today. Yeah, it's good to have you again. <laughs> we, we needed to have a part two because we didn't finish last time. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I listened to the, to the audio again as a, just a refresher of what we discussed. We discussed a lot, actually. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, not to eat when anxious and stressed, uh, only eating when hungry. Um, and and you, you, actually, you did mention something. I thought I might, before we start this afternoon, just uh, check that with you again. You said only eat when we're hungry because even sattvic foods, which, you know, really good nutritious foods, won't be digested properly and it can become like a poison. Like if you just eating sort of mindlessly and throwing food down our throat you know when we're not hungry you know people just eat because they think oh it's six o'clock i have to eat absolutely this kind of faulty food habit you know there are a few faulty food habits which have been mentioned in ayurveda basically i can talk about three of them what you just mentioned is a type of adhyashana that means eating again and again you know not thinking whether you're hungry or not whether the earlier meal has been digested or not so to put it simple I can give an example when you're cooking rice, okay? After five minutes, you come back and put some more rice. After 10 minutes, you come back and put some more rice. Oh. What would happen? Although rice is sattvic, it's a good food, but some of it will be overcooked, some of it will be undercooked. Can you consume such a meal? No. So how can your body assimilate such a meal which has been improperly digested? So this is one of the faulty food eating habits which can actually lead to a variety of illnesses majorly because it affects the digestive system it results in the formation of undigested toxins called ama uh, so poison never is not necessarily coming from outside it can be made inside mm -hmm. as well and then those cause inflammatory changes in your body clogs up the channels of absorption affects your nourishment so in fact even though you're eating you're not getting nourished properly interesting so, and then there are two more other eating faulty eating habits which i can talk about is mixing something which is good and something which is not good together and having it. So it could be as simple as probably something which is wholesome for you and something which is not wholesome for you or which is in fact processed in a wrong manner. Honey is good, but if you process it in a wrong manner, eat it, mm -hmm. then it turns toxic. And the third one is uh, overeating, undereating or eating at inappropriate times. So all these faulty eating habits, although the food may be good and but you are not ready to have it or you're not having it in the proper way. So all these are um, known to lead to a variety of illnesses in the body and over a period of time, diabetes, obesity and all the lifestyle diseases which we come across could be due to them. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So how does, it, like just very briefly, uh, how does under eating affect our body and mind? Because a lot of people under eat. Hmm. Yeah. So basically under eating will not provide you your body with the necessary nutrients uh, in enough amount. So for example, I see that nowadays many young people and teenage girls or they want they don't want to put on weight so they'll actually starve, which actually leads to deterioration of the tissues or the elements of their body and over a period of time there is a imbalance of vata dosha created because if your body is not properly nourished it doesn't have the strength it doesn't have the vitality it your mind will also be not nourished you know that kind of irritability will come into your mind and your own digestive fire when it is not getting enough amount of food that will lead to the imbalance of other doshas as well so if you're not eating correctly not eating in enough amounts then it could cause to other illnesses due to the imbalance of these doshas and sometimes what happens is when we under eat then sometimes we just crave for food and then we rush to eat something which is unhealthy and that because the digestive fire now you have been making it stuff and now it doesn't know how to work on it so it leads to the again formation of undigested toxins so that's why moderation is the key eat appropriate and your body will always tell you your intelligence is fantastic and it will always tell you okay stop eating now you're full so that's why we need to give enough time to our mind or for intelligence to realize that we are full now so if we eat hurriedly then probably it doesn't get enough time to tell you and by the time it tells you you have already consumed more than required 
I like that how you say that the, the body has its own intelligence and we've spoken about this before on the show but I really want to hone in on that because you know we are so intelligent in body mind and soul but we we've lost it over the what was should I say was it hundreds of years or or what is it you know way back when we were more in tune in tune is like with our intelligence is the utmost necessary thing which is required um, I, you know, like it has always been said that you know yourself much better than anyone else knows you. But when we are overcome by our desires or when we don't have the knowledge or due to ignorance, we don't listen to our body's intelligence, then we go start going against it. So this is also called as pradnya parada or crime against our intelligence. So if we don't respect our intelligence and follow its uh, recommendations, because it's always trying to keep us healthy. And one of the examples of crime against intelligence could be like your body telling you this is the time to eat and you're not eating. So that's a suppression of the urge of hunger. Or it could be telling you go to toilet, this is the time to go to toilet. And because of our busy, busy schedule, we won't be able to go to toilet. So this is the intelligence which is telling us subtle signals of our body or kind of expressions of our body telling us do these things to be healthy. But then if we don't listen to them because of a number of reasons, you know, then uh, we go against it. And that's the invitation to our idea of illnesses. And of the three major reasons which are known to cause illnesses, this is one of the most important reasons mentioned in Ayurveda. Mm, absolutely. You explain it well. Thank <laughs> you. So interesting. And it just brings to mind, you know, when we were just talking about that, that, you know, like some people... I've heard of a lot of people saying that if they need to use the bathroom when they're out, like at work or at, if they're at dinner with friends at a restaurant or something, or even at someone's house, they don't want to use the bathroom. Like there's some people that have that feeling um, for whatever reason. I'm sure there's a lot of different reasons, but mm. and they hold they hold it so they don't use the bathroom. And I've thought to myself, that's not good. <laughs> Why the human body saying, "Come on, let's go." <laughs> You know, and you're going you're gonna to plug it up for, what, another six hours or whatever. That's yes. so bad. And you may be having the food or consuming things when you need to, uh, when you get an urge to pass bowel moment or when you need to go to pee. So it's just that, you know, your body is telling you there are toxins in the body which you need to get rid of. But if they stay back for a long period of time, they are like causing inflammation. They are inflammatory triggers in your body. And... It doesn't have to come out from outside always. It could happen within as well. What do you mean? So inflammatory things. Oh. <laughs> because, you know, most of the times we say that this food is inflammatory, that food is non-inflammatory. But, you know, when oh, we do these things, mean. so diet, lifestyle, mm. suppression of natural urges, there are 13 of them which have been recommended that you should never suppress these urges. And if you do, then probably slowly you're actually going towards the crime against intelligence. And then... There will be a time when your body will stop sending you signals. <laughs> That's right. So now, uh, nowadays people talk about autoimmune diseases and so many other disorders which they don't know why they happen. But nothing happens That's without right. the reason. There's a reason for everything. Exactly. You hear people say that they went to the doctors if they're not well and the doctor doesn't know what caused it or what's going on. They just, here you go, have this... <laughs> pain relief or exactly. like put a band-aid on a wound but oh, okay what caused the wound you never know yeah so, so it's more about you know and it's it's oh, that is ayurvedic philosophy that nothing will happen without a reason there's a reason behind everything and we as ayurvedic doctors are always searching for that reason because the reason could be different in different people some people the reason could be suppression of urges some people could be um, having an incompatible diet so you cannot treat everyone the same way so mm -hmm. It's all tailor-made. Mm. And also, just want to backtrack before we move on about the um, not uh, listening to the body signals on when it needs to, uh, you know, use a bathroom and mm. say it like that. Mm. Um, and then you've heard people saying then the urge is gone. Like then when they when they have left the party or left work and then they, you know, they think they're going to go to the bathroom, but they can't go and then they can't go for another day or two, so it can block them up. Of course, it is going to block them up because... Uh, that causes uh, all the urges when suppressed, they cause vata imbalance in the body. And then uh, when the vata imbalance happens, it affects the digestive fire. And then once the digestive fire is affected, whatever you consume is going to be converted into undigested toxin called as ama. So this becomes a vicious circle mm. wherein, okay, 
uh, not clearing the bowel movements every day is also a sign of indigestion in the body so it's like going towards the indigestion storing the things in your body not letting it go out so that's why we need a detox <laughs> and then there's a there's a thing uh, i mean uh, all ayurveda always recommends about preventive aspect first mm. but due to any reason it could be due to ignorance or not having a proper knowledge about whether they were doing it right or wrong it never blames them it says that okay here we have the curative measures for that so please keep them and in future please try to avoid these things mm. and that's why we've got you here today again just to get some little tips and also if listeners want to come and see you personally uh, privately obviously for a consult a health mm. consult they can do that too but we're just opening up the conversation here sure no problem um, okay so why don't we get firstly can you just tell us what is a sat vic food okay so food uh, is such a vast topic and there have been various um, benchmarks or kind of platforms wherein it has been divided into so many types uh, like you know it could be sattvic ratsik tamasik depending upon how it impacts our mind okay now in short and to simplify it there are three states of mind one which is actually giving you the pure knowledge or purity of mind when we say that we are in a blissful state or peaceful state we are not agitated we see the things as they are you know uh, to give you an example if somebody does something wrong to you and you would not react immediately and take a pause and think about there could be a reason behind that behavior so that's something a sattvic person would do or a sattvic state of mind would do rajasic second one is more of aggression or driven by desires or kind of uh, if somebody does something wrong then probably he would like you know agitate or get angry or uh, give him back like something like that and the tamasic or the third state of mind is more like you know not bothered about what is happening outside so they are just lazy or lethargic okay somebody let him go i'm not bothered so they won't do the sattvic thing which is to understand and sort no, of wish them they well they'll just that. be totally neutral Another thing about is that, what, is that is that right? Yeah, so sattvic people will not be uh, affected, or they don't they won't let their behavior affect their person's uh, state of mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, but tamasic people, if you try to tell them some good thing, okay, this is not good for you. Don't sit at one place. Don't be lazy. Don't be lethargic. Go out, play, and they would be like you know they would find fault with everything. What people are oh, doing. the third one that you yeah, mentioned. Yeah, the third one. Right. You know, they'll be like, you know, they'll find just, fault with mm. every small thing. You know? But they don't get angry, but they just don't care. They don't care. Is that what you mean? They're, like, indifference, I should much, say. Indifference. Yes. So it's like, you know, okay, I'm not bothered about, or, you know, they would be just in their own um, space or kind of uh, selfish, also, I would say, like, you know, just thinking about themselves and this gives me pleasure, let me just do it. So probably involved in more. Um, uh, more getting intoxicated with alcohol or something like that so there is a everybody would enjoy having some people would enjoy having alcohol and but they know where to stop it but then if you just involve with those pleasures and don't want to see the things but uh, like you know I can give an example that if this is your true intelligence it's like a light so the tamasic people due to the kind of behavior or due to whatever they are doing would create clouds so the intelligence is being blinded or clouded so they don't see the things as they are so they will just find flaw, uh, flaws or faults with whatever people are telling so now food can make a huge impact on your mind so mm -hmm. most of the times when we don't think about the mind and just think about filling our stomach then any food is okay but then if you would think of a food uh, which is like freshly cooked warm and uh, prepared in a proper manner and just you know like presented in a good manner because back in India you know we have banana leaf the food is put on mm, the banana leaf and right. then it, all the simple it could be served on a leaf but then the kind of satisfaction you would get after having the food in this manner is very different so it could be as simple as rice and dal and with a teaspoon of melted ghee drizzled on top of that heaven you are having that when you're hungry it's just heaven and such a food which is light and easy to digest will be assimilated well in your body will be out of your body within 24 hours and there's no time for it to get those levels of detox i mean toxifying your body but on the contrary if you're eating uh, things like you know which are 
overly pungent or overly sour or kind of processed with too many uh, preservatives or kind of uh, very salty food, very dry food. To give examples in today's life, you know, uh, too many chilies in there mm -hmm. or kind of uh, some things, you know, would when you consume, you won't feel that much. But then after that, it causes burning sensation in your body. Mm -hmm. So they are called as pidahi. So such foods or uh, kind of foods which like, you know, wafers, you know, when you eat them, there's a dryness in your mouth, which is mm -hmm. created. So all these foods would increase that kind of irritability, agitation in your body and the way we eat, the way we behave again then. Mm. So that is how it causes more inflammatory responses in the body. You cannot concentrate, cannot focus, always agitated, irritated. Mm. So those are the states of mind. So Ayurveda recommends to eat all the six states, but mm. then the amount in which these other tastes should be taken is very less as compared to the main taste which is sweet now sweet doesn't mean sugar yeah but it's more of the grains or carbohydrates you know like in the form of rice wheat millets so those things could come under that madhura rasa or kind of sweet but other tastes should be consumed in moderation just to give a uh, i mean just to give that taste or kind of uh, improve your digestive juices secretion so like spices and salt you mean yes spices right. and salt again over not too much not too much everything in moderation is good mm. uh, so that's the key and then tamasic food could be more related to uh, things which have been actually the definition uh, of tamasic food as given in Gita is like one which has uh, been cooked and left it for hours together so roughly around four to six hours or three to four hours depending upon which translation we go with but then in simple it means that the food which has been cooked and left for a long period of time so you should consume food as soon as it is cooked but at least within it changes the taste because you know once you cook the food and mm. then it's very common to get the food spoiled easily back in india because in my, i'm from mumbai and in mumbai the weather is always hot and humid mm. so morning you cook the vegetable you take it for the lunch and sometimes you see the taste has changed slightly mm. so you know something or to put it in simple leftovers or you know even if you cook the food and store it in the fridge still a slow cooking happens in the food and that just makes you dull lazy lethargic some people would try to eat something at night which is freshly prepared and take the same thing the next day to the office uh, i would request them to just pause for a moment and think about how much you could consume how your body and mind felt when you had it last night and how do you feel now when you are reheating it again and then having that cold food so that's the difference how it makes to our mind so mm -hmm. again meat meat is also tamasic in nature there are certain vegetables which would be more tamasic in nature like potatoes mushrooms eggplants so you know these are the sh uh, things which actually draw energy from your body to get digested you know they are called as negative karmic foods also for that matter so it's very important you know uh, in today's world pure sattvic diet would be very difficult to follow but it could be a little combination of sattvic and rajasic having doing the things in moderation sometimes as so i was discussing with you before sometimes we may feel like eating something which is a little tangy or a little more mm. spicy eat that but in moderation just listen to your body how your body feels if it's causing too much of problem probably it's not the right food for you so this is how uh, depending upon how the food impacts our mind, it has been divided into three different types, which is Sattvic, Rajasik and Tamasic. So Ayurveda always recommends Sattvic food because of its healing properties, mm -hmm. detoxifying properties. It helps you to think clearly, uh, understand the things as they are, not being biased by our likes or dislikes. For example, people would say that I like this, um, I don't like to exercise or I like this kind of food but uh, that thing may not necessarily be good for them mm. so there's a difference between what you like and what is good for you and sattvic kind of state of mind helps you to understand that thing much better so sattvic foods examples of sattvic foods would be like fresh uh, sort of hydrating foods like fruits with natural sugars and give electrolytes yes, to the body so fresh freshly cooked meals as well as fresh, fresh fruits yeah. vegetables are all sattvic in nature so uh, and also like you know for example rice and mang dal is some is an example which i gave you but anything which you cook fresh flick it you know um pluck the vegetables from the farm or you know like at least when they are not cooked but fresh seasonal vegetables fruits are another examples milk 
uh, ghee. These are uh, it's, uh, honey for that matter. Honey is um, good. The honey is good. Honey is good. Uh, and that's also something which can satvic foods because they are healing in nature, detoxifying in nature and always support your intelligence. That's why they are recommended to be had more often than mm. other foods. But be careful which honey we get, because if we get this sort of mass produced processed honey that's heated, then it, it's, it's like basically just having sh empty uh, calories. Uh, or, sugar. Organic. I think nowadays it's organic. more of organic. So and probably and it's not processed too much. Uh, that's something I would recommend. Same with the milk as well. Like, you know, nowadays we get uh, homogenized, pasteurized, all those things are happening on the milk. Uh, homogenization is something which actually um, makes it more difficult for us to digest. So I always prefer, and I could see that difference because back in India, we used to get it uh, from a place where there were cows and buffaloes. Um, so the, the person used to directly sell it to us. There was no pasteurization or anything really? happening. And is that called unhomogenized? Is that that right? was unpasteurized. Unpasteurized. So it's definitely when there is no pasteurization, then there was no unhomogenization unho then. But, but don't here, they do that to kill the bacteria? Uh, if they are being used later, I think it's necessary. But if it's oh, if you do it, if you get it there and then, then it's not necessary. It's actually oh. very good in that sense. Like just like the breast milk of mother, you don't have to cook it or heat it. You know, uh, the baby is directly having it, then absolutely not necessary to do any processing on that particular part. But then if you are extracting the milk somewhere and taking it somewhere else, then probably I think pasteurization is something which mm. is required. But then I think homogenization. I could be wrong about it, but then I have seen that difference in my body that, you know, uh, I wouldn't digest that much in the way I would mm -hmm. digest the unhomogenized milk yeah. and organic milk for that matter. Mm -hmm. So I think at the end of the day, we should be following a moderation key wherein, okay, if you're not getting this, then at least boil the milk before you use it. Mm. So okay. rather than having it directly from the fridge. So that is something we would always do in India. So even the yogurt, when we make yogurt, we boil the milk get it to warm temperature and then set it. So it's never done with the cold milk and mm. it wouldn't set to that uh, level also. So it wouldn't set properly. Yeah, so right. heating mm -hmm. kills the bacteria, of course. So I think you can do it uh, by boiling the milk before you use it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, so just before we finish off, can we just have a couple of little recipes for our dear listeners? So if they want to make some nice, healthy, easy not too difficult sort of a brekkie lunch and dinner or or just even if you've just even if it doesn't have to be breakfast lunch and dinner even if you've just got a couple of recipes because sometimes you can alternate what you can have for lunch and then you can have for breakfast yeah so uh as i would always say is that you know eat food when you're hungry so mm. probably you don't have to have three meals it could be like two meals depending upon how True. and when you're feeling hungry and uh we have a concept of patte kalpana that means simple recipes which will keep your channels in a good condition and because that's the key to your health so something like khichdi which everybody must mm. have heard about but um also tried about it but i would give it a small uh, twist so south indian style of khichdi we also call it as mongal so it would be like you know a small twist to that recipe of course i'll give you the recipe and then you can share with the listeners if they're interested to have it but then a simple way of doing it like roasting the mung dal before cooking uh, just lightly uh, roasting it dry roasting it till it leaves some aroma mm. that will enhance the taste of the khichdi so and when you are like you know washing taking the rice and dal in equal quantities uh, put them together wash them well and then um, take little ghee in a saucepan and then lightly roast them in ghee as well and then add four times water. I prefer to use pressure cooker because it's quick. Sometimes when you don't have yeah. time, you can do it in that manner. So add rice, dal, um, four cups of water. One is to four is the ratio. So uh, if somebody wants to know about it and add a little salt to it. So cook this and keep it aside. And then for the tempering, we heat some ghee in a pan. Add cumin seeds, asafoetida, curry leaves, chopped or grated ginger and few cashews like you know if you're not uh, allergic to any nuts then few pieces of cashews will give that kind of crunch to your food mm. and uh, sometimes it just feels good you yeah, get one you cashew. texture don't you and this is something which is actually served in temples in south india as a form of prasharan so as it's a, a form of prasad, like offering to the god so then it's distributed amongst people after it is offered to the god nuts 
uh, no, the, 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 whole dish. The, the whole dish. Oh, okay. So this was actually that version. And also it has got some peppercorns, lightly crushed peppercorns. So not very spicy, a simple sattvic food. And that tempering, then you can put it on uh, the cooked rice and dal and give it a good mix. Yeah, and nice. if you want a little bit more of tea on top of that, and it just serves the purpose. If you get bored of just eating khichdi every day, you can cook rice and dal separately mm. and then have mix how much ever you want to. And when you're okay. having uh, rice dal especially, I would say that always drizzle a teaspoon of ghee on top of that because right. it enhances the flavor uh, or like, you know, chopped coriander, finely chopped coriander leaves on top of that will always be a good, um, good, looks good for the presentation and also makes you feel good with that freshness. If you get bored with all uh, again rice and dal, then I think it's um, you can also make pancakes out of it. Like soak the rice and dal together for a few hours. Like you know, if you're taking split uh, yellow mung lentils, uh, then you can soak it for three to four hours. The whole ones take more time to soak, so you can soak the whole ones overnight if you're using the whole ones. And then morning you can just grind it, like you know, strain the water, grind it with required amount of water. While grinding, you can even add a little bit of ginger cumin seeds, um, asafoetida, if you like, you can even add one green chili. So moderation, again, too much, mm -hmm. not preferred. And then make it into a batter. Okay. And then you can make pancakes out of it. And sometimes we also top it up with some onions, if you like, mm -hmm. and then again, it's cooked. So as I said, you know, moderation. Onions are considered to be rancid, but then if you cook them well uh, and have them freshly cooked, sometimes that makes you feel good. <laughs> onions are good, aren't they? But cleansing for the body, it's quite yes. potent. Uh, onions and garlic are good medicines. So uh, you can actually use them in moderation. But then also if moderation, you're like... Kind of, yes, key word. And more seasonal, like, you know, when it is winter, you need that warming thing in your body. So I think it's more of uh, using food as a medicine. Then you can mm. incorporate onions, garlic, ginger as well. <laughs> Oh, look, I was watching a show last night. Was it was it Rick Stein, Cornwall, Rick Stein or Food Safari, one of those shows? And they were interviewing a gentleman in Thailand on his farm. And he said, why do we need to go to the pharmacy to get vitamins when we can get our medicine from the tree? And he just picked a fresh apple and ate it. He said, this is medicine. <laughs> I thought, oh my, medicine. well, we don't all have an apple tree in our backyard. But, you know, it, it's good to get the fresh fruit and veg. That's the medicine. That's the medicine. And I think uh, sometimes when people would fast or they want that purity of the mind because they are doing some religious activities or kind of scriptures or pujas or havans, whatever they are doing back in India, they would only be staying on the diet of fruits and milk, not together. Mm -hmm. But then uh, they either they'll so have correct. milk or they'll have fruits because that keeps their mind in a calmer state and they can more concentrate or focus on the... Um, intellect or kind of you know like they can do things properly and you said they do that when when they're when they are fasting fasting or kind of, yeah so if some people cannot fast it completely so right. whenever they feel hungry they will be having sattvic food and that keeps their body detoxified because you don't get, you don't need those emotions which will make you lazy lethargic or kind of over reactive to things mm. so even coffee for that matter you know it it's can stimulating too much sometimes. stimulating too much when your body is tired, it's dragging you to work. And this is yeah, like... Right. Moment, so it's not natural. No, it's not natural. And and what happens is like this becomes a habit. And then your body wants it more and more because you feel fresh when you have it. And over a period of time, they play with your nervous system. So that is sympathetic act, overactivation, which keeps happening. And you cannot rest. You know, some people, they will uh, have hours of sleep, but they don't get that restful feeling. Why is that so? Because they are not at peace. Peace is required to sleep and also to focus on your work. <laughs> Gee, you are a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> Very good. It's all I read. <laughs> Thank you. And, and I will just mention what we talked about last time and we'll just say it again, but the, across the globe, across the world, many cultures, whatever people believe in, whatever religion, a lot of cultures around the world do prayer or meditation before they ingest the food just so the food is assimilated nicely in the body you know eat in a calm state like we said don't eat when we're stressed or anxious yes pause pause before pause. you do any important activity it could be having food it could be before going to bed reflect are you how are you feeling 
how is your mind feeling how is your body feeling reflect on it listen to it and i think in turn it will make you feel happy balanced and connected mm, wow thank you <laughs> all right uh, can, can you just give us a little sort of half a minute 30 second uh, mindfulness and meditation or prayer that we can do throughout the day whether we're going to eat or whether we're just in gratitude for something just like a 30 second positive mantra yeah uh, so you want a mantra or you want or, a meditation? Oh, <laughs> yeah, positive words or whatever you call that. So yeah, uh, I think 30 seconds is not enough to no, do a meditation. Right, I mean, so probably I, mean I can wind it up saying what are the important concepts of food or probably, you know, uh, one important thing I can say that, you know, you breathe, you know, breathe. just focus on your breath. That's more than enough. You don't have to chant any mantras. If you don't know, probably chanting mantras could be an add-on thing and it could, you can take a step by step. First, focus on your breath. Feel how you're feeling in your breath. Are you breathing too hard or too slow or you're holding your breath? Just pay attention to that. And a couple of breaths with small inhalations and long exhalations. And with every exhalation, try to relax your body more and more. So, or if, if it's not helping, then probably uh, think of a happy moment and then let your body get filled with that. And that works. You know, just thinking of one happy moment. We may be having a number of happy moments. Think of one good thing you did today or a few days before or whatever it is and let your heart fill in with that love and transfer that love to whole body and help ask it to help you in whatever you're going to do. So I think it's very important to honor, listen to our body, respect it for whatever it is doing for us. And in turn, I think it will make us happy, feel happy, balanced and connected. So respect, uh, I think we were talking more about the relationship with food. As with every relationship, respect is the key. You know, We should be respecting our food so that our food in turn, we get that respect again from our food. Uh, go with our intelligence and not go against it. So listen to our bodies and subtle signals and pay attention to what our body is trying to communicate to us. Uh, looking at all the um, disorders or so many diseases coming up due to faulty eating habits or improper eating habits, a wise man should always control his mind because you know you may like something and you may don't want to do something. So controlling your mind, having a control your mind and telling your mind this is good for me so I should be having that. Should always consume a wholesome meal at proper time and it's very important in that case. So stay away from those diseases by using medicine, food as your medicine. I think uh, that's very important. Wow, well said. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah.